It's that time to share more models. A liquid used for curing super glue really fast. And a way to remove paint from an old model. Coming up next on Hot Off The Bench. Well, hey everyone, and welcome to this month's Hot Off The Bench. I've got some really nice models to show you, so let's start off with that slideshow. So first up in our slideshow here is this beautiful diorama by Lee Chambers. I've shown a couple of his Star Wars hangar creations in the past, and this month he brings us this beautiful recreation from the movie Fantastic Voyage. Lee describes this as a scene in which the ship's intakes get clogged by fibers as they enter the ear canal. To create the fibers, Lee used tag rag cloth that he washed in acetone to remove the wax that coated the cloth. He then attached them to the hull with epoxy. This is the 132 scale kit from Mobius Models, which Lee nicely painted and detailed. His build includes both interior and exterior lighting, along with these beautiful figures. And by the way, to create a nice interesting photo shoot here, he decided to run the movie in the background, so that's what you see there uh, as a backdrop for the model. Great job, Lee, as always. Thanks for sharing. Model builder Peter Mertz is next here as we transition into the Star Wars universe with a couple of his builds that represent his first attempts at creating dioramas. The two models you see here are from a single Bandai kit which he separated into two different dioramas. The first is the ATST placed into a tropical scene. He purchased all of the materials used here from Michaels and he drew from various bills he saw online as his inspiration. The snow speeder was placed into a snowy environment and he created a base using plaster and foam. He created the pond and frozen waterfall you see in the background using resin. He then added lights to the inside of the jar and covered them with cotton balls to achieve the stormy effect. Really great job here, Peter, especially for your first attempt. Definitely am looking forward to other bills from you. Okay, well next is this beautiful build by Dean Arnold. Uh, this is the Republic Venator class Star Destroyer. The model kit you see here is the 12700 scale model from Rovell, which has become quite rare actually. Dean added to it by casting resin replacement cannons using his own silicone molds. He also custom built a base which was painted to mimic the planet Coruscant. Dean has been building models since the early 80s and as you can see his experience shows, he did such a beautiful job painting and detailing the ship. And here we have a very nice diorama from builder Eagle Farrell, whose work I featured before. Here he uses a Ravel snap-tight X-wing for this, and Rusty tells me this is the first time he's ever built the fighter in the landed position. He says that when he decided on proceeding, he knew a diorama would be perfect for this project, and he imagined a refueling slash repair station situated on a plateau located somewhere on a remote planet. He wanted it to be grimy and unorganized, so he filled the area around the fighter with 3D printed and kit-bashed items. He also injects a little humor here too, as we see one guy doing all the work while the other stands behind directing him. The little droids, equipment, flooring, and rubble all make for a dynamic and interesting display with lots for the viewer to take in. Another nice one there, Rusty. Thanks for sharing it with us. Now these next couple of Star Wars builds are from modeler Carson Ward. Carson is a talented builder who does some fantastic work, and here we have his Delta 7B Aether Sprite fighter with a hyperdrive ring. It's a 3D printed ship, and the files can be bought from Merlin Models, the link is below. Carson beautifully painted and detailed the ship as you can see, and did such an amazing job with lighting it as well. And here's his build of the Jabba the Hutt's Katana Sail Barge. He did such a nice job on this one that it looks like a filming miniature to me. He describes it as a resin PLA print that measures 37 inches in length, and the file is from designer Rob Rossi. Just check out all the details, some of which are scratch built that Carson added to this build. Really very nice job, Carson. All right, let's go ahead and transition into the Star Trek universe by showing you this unique piece from Michael Walston. It's a piece that features a little bit of Star Trek and Star Wars together. Michael created this piece for StarshipModeler.com's Trek Wars competition, and it took first place in the diorama category. Michael says he's always wanted to see the Doomsday Machine actually bust up a planet, or in this case, a small moon. He goes on to say that Spock said the planet killer came from outside from another galaxy, and Kirk later speculates it was used in a war uncounted years ago. And to Michael, that meant a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Michael scratch built the 14 inch Doomsday Machine out of plastic from red solo cups and secured it to the AMT Ertl's Death Star model with the anti-proton beam made from an acrylic Pilsner mug. He drilled lots of holes, created his own Death Star decals, and slung hot solder on a plate to create the battle damage for both vessels. He then glued the splats onto the models over painted scorch marks. He then added scaffolding inserts into the holes in the Death Star. 
For lighting the beam, he used a Soai Aurora Nightlight, which projects a variety of patterns and colors. It's a pretty amazing build there, Michael. Thanks for sharing. Continue on within the Trek universe, we have this really nice build of the 1-1000 Defiant from Polar Lights from builder David Keane, and this is his first attempt at lighting. Now, of course, the Defiant was certainly a departure from other Starship designs we saw in Star Trek. The Defiant has a lot of panel lines and surface detailing, which David did a fine job enhancing with the wash he applied. And, of course, he used small LEDs to light up the engines and detailing along the upper hull, which made the model pop even further. I have to say, it turned out great, David. His next build is going to be the Mark I Viper from Battlestar Galactica, and we definitely look forward to seeing that one too. And speaking of Galactica, here is a beautiful build of a Cylon Raider by bondler David Pasconelli. The model kit is the Ravel 30th Anniversary Edition of the ship, and this build marks David's return to the hobby after a 20-year hiatus. David points out that the kit has a lot of issues with quality and fit, but he made do with it. David created custom missiles for the open holes at the front, and also customized the back brace between the engines due to its poor fit. And David did a great job making sure the details and panels show up on the model by using a wash. It just looks fantastic. Thanks, David, for sharing. Here we have some interesting sculpts by Trevor Gaillot of Aaron Gray as Colonel Deering from the Buck Rogers TV series. To create these, he used ZBrush Core, a digital clay app, and then he printed them in a material called Multi-Jet Fusion Polyamide. Trevor used acrylics to paint the sculpts. He used both an airbrush and hand brushing techniques to detail the figures. He notes the surface striations and grain are inherent with MJF3 prints, and he purposely decides to leave those attributes on the models. Thanks for sharing, Trevor. And here's a favorite of mine, the 1-144 scale Nautilus from Pegasus Models. This was built by modeler Tim Thompson, who did quite a nice job with it. Although the kit comes with its own photo edge set, Tim says he also added the set from Para Graphics and used the vinyl window masking kit from Lou Del Masso. He painted the kit with acrylics and further enhanced the surface details with washes. Tim lit the ship with Pico SMDs, and one thing he decided to do was to make the port observation removable in order to better view the detailed salon interior. Beautifully done, Tim. And to end our show this month, we have a scratch belt ship from builder Scott Washington. The ship is from the PC game Homeworld, but Scott points out it's one of the designs that wasn't used in the game. The model was created using styrene sheets, which he cut into shape with an X-Acto, and used a scoring tool to add the panel lines. The model was glued together using acrylic solvent, and he also added greeblies to the surface for more detailing. Really nice work, Scott. Thanks for sharing. Well, another slideshow there filled with some beautiful work. Thanks again, guys, for allowing me to share it. If you'd like to have your model featured on an upcoming slideshow, just send them to ismslideshow at gmail.com. That's ismslideshow at gmail. Okay, it's now time to talk about a product that's going to help you out with model building. But before I get to that, I wanted just to update you on one new thing that's sitting on my bench, and that is the Elegoo Saturn printer. I was able to upgrade my 3D printer from the Mars to the Saturn recently. Uh, as you know, I've been using the Mars quite successfully over the last year and a half or so, and the more I got into 3D printing, the more I started to think uh, and realize how much uh, advantage a faster as well as a printer that has a, a larger build plate would be. And this is something that I wasn't in a rush to do, uh, but I started to think about it more and more, and not long ago, Ken Spriggs messaged me to let me know that it was on sale on Amazon for $4.99. Typically goes uh, for a bit more than that. And so I decided just to pull the trigger, and I'm glad I did. So check this out. I was able to print out this replica of the Cobra Head Next Generation Phaser for a friend of mine, and as you can see, I was able to fit all the parts on the bill plate and was able to print it in one run. And this is a replica of the uh, boomerang phaser from Voyager, same thing, I was able to print it all in one run as well. So uh, if you're thinking about getting into 3D printing, you know, you don't always necessarily have to make this jump uh, right away. Uh, I thought the Mars was a great machine and uh, had no problems with it. A uh, really nice way to transition into uh, 3D printing. So they do still have the original Mars for sale, but if I were you, I would really think about uh, the newer versions of Mars Pro, which are faster and uh, they, they sell for a little more than the original Mars, but I think the added speed is well worth it. Um, and as with anything that you're going to invest in, definitely do your research. Um, there are Facebook pages for not only LEU, but Anycubic and a number of the other companies out there. And just see what people have to say about them. Uh, and that way you can feel confident about making the jump. 
All right, let's go ahead and move on to the product that I'd like to talk about here. Now, many of us use super glue or cyanoacrylate, and for some of us that is our primary adhesive. For others, we use it on more specialized needs, whether it's a resin project or small little parts that you're putting in a place that you're just, um, it'd be too difficult to wait for uh, regular uh, plastic cement to set. But uh, sometimes uh, super glue is just not fast enough, and this is where you could use Instaset. Uh, this is a liquid or an accelerator here that allows the super glue to dry and harden a lot faster. Um, now many of you know about this product already, but uh, the reason why I wanted to uh, talk about it for a few minutes here is because every time I've used it um, on my videos, I always have a question about it, and uh, so I thought it'd be a good product to highlight here. Um, now one of the uh, uses for super glue for me is to um, tidy up wires, especially after I'm ready to close up a model after uh, uh, wiring it in for lighting. Uh, sometimes the wires can be a little bit unruly or you just want to organize them a little bit so a lot of times I will uh, adhere them to the uh, surface of the plastic. And uh, at first I was using hot glue for that but uh, hot glue is high temperature obviously and there is a potential of damaging the LEDs. I know LEDs can be pretty hardy uh, but uh, you know last thing you want to do is damage uh, some wires to all of these uh, lights that you've uh, spent uh, a bunch of time trying to wire in. And the other thing I have found is that uh, hot glue seems to come undone after a while. It just didn't work really well for me, so, so super glue has been a better option. Um, so what I do in that case is um, I use uh, Instaset to make the process go a little faster. Let me just show you an example here. So when it comes to wires, what I do is uh, I'll, I'll end up uh, placing a piece of tape on each side of the section I'm going to be applying the super glue to. And then I apply a drop of the super glue onto the area and then use a dropper filled with the Instaset to place a drop on there. And as you can see, it allows the super glue to dry a lot quicker. Now, another hint when you are using this stuff is I used to actually use the uh, end of the tube here to place a drop onto whatever it is I wanted to apply this to. Uh, but more often than not, I ended up touching the super glue, uh, or at least the tube to the super glue, and after a while, well, obviously, because this hardens the stuff, it messes up the tube. Um, so uh, one way to prevent that is just to put some in an eyedropper, and uh, this will allow you to continue to maintain the function of the uh, spray bottle here, uh, or without having to continue to cut the tube, make it smaller. Okay, so if you're using super glue and you want it to dry a little faster, uh, this is a good product to have on hand. All right, well it's now time for our model tip, and uh, what brought this to mind was a Facebook page that I saw earlier this week on StarshipModeler.com. This gentleman had left a question on how to remove paint from an old model kit. And so this got me into thinking about a project that I worked on a little bit ago, uh, in which I refurbished an old model kit. It was a Starship uh, or Starfleet runabout uh, that I worked on. And uh, many of us have these old models that are sitting on a shelf uh, that we worked on a number of years ago. And since then, you've honed your skills, learned different techniques, uh, gotten better equipment. And sometimes you'll look at those models and think, you know, if I were to do that today, I know I could do a much better job than that. You start seeing all the defects and all the things that uh, maybe you weren't quite skilled enough to uh, to address back then. And so that happened to me uh, a bit ago with a, um, a Star Trek kit. It was a Starfleet runabout, and it was a fun project to do. So I thought I would just leave a few comments here on how to refurbish an old model kit. So the first thing I want to do is uh, pry the model apart. And uh, now if you have a different suggestion on how to do this, feel free to leave a comment uh, down below so that uh, the rest of us can learn from your experience. Uh, but the way I did it was to use this tool here. It's called a Wave HT196. It's a very simple tool. It has this little uh, thing at the end here with a tapered edge that it's meant to put into tight spaces. You just twist it and it pries uh, the pieces apart. It's really meant to be used for snap type kits. Um, and uh, the reason I got it was because the Bandai kits fit together that way. A lot of them are uh, snap tight or, or kind of fit together like Legos. And sometimes when you're working on a model kit like that and you uh, either put the pieces together too soon or you have to go back and, and pry them apart, this is a great way to do that. So if you can get a hold, if you can get a hold of one, I'd recommend having it for at least that. But uh, this worked for me for the runabout. Uh, it was easy to, to uh, just gently pry the pieces apart. 
Um, the model kit was <laughs> already falling apart anyway. Uh, and so that's how I proceeded with that. But uh, I've also heard that you could take the model and stick it in a plastic bag, put it in a freezer, and leave it there overnight. The cold temperature helps to break those bonds. And I've heard it works real well with super glue. I'm not sure how it works with plastic cement uh, or cement that actually uh, wells plastic together. But again, if you've got a suggestion on how to do that for those circumstances, uh, feel free to leave that below. So for taking off the paint, uh, it was interesting, uh, a number of people had left different suggestions which included soaking it in Windex, uh, acetone, alcohol, methylated spirits. I'm sure all those work. In fact, I'll leave a link to that post, uh, if I can, uh, down below so you can uh, check out the different answers. But uh, one suggestion that I left was this stuff here, Purple Power, because that's how I did it with the runabout. Just take the pieces and uh, fill the stuff up, uh, or fill a bucket up with this stuff. Take your pieces, soak it in there overnight, and make sure you're using gloves with this. Um, but morning time, you can just take the pieces out and start scrubbing the paint, and it comes right off. Uh, the stuff is a degreaser. You can get it pretty cheap at Walmart. I think this bottle cost me less than five bucks. And then after that, of course, you just go ahead and proceed uh, with your build and uh, just make sure that uh, you've got decals that you replace the old ones with. With the AMT kits, it's not quite as difficult because uh, there are a number of sites which include Federation Models, Cult TV Man, Starship Modeler, uh, and probably eBay as well, where you can get replacement decals for that. So just make sure that you, you can do that before you start. And then it's, uh, again, fun to see how it looked uh, before and after. Here is how the uh, runabout looked when I was completed with it. So when you're in the mood for refurbishing a model, hopefully these tips will help you out. Okay guys, well that is a wrap here for this segment of Hot Off The Bench. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you have any comments, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Uh, coming up next now is this project here, which is going to be a conversion of the USS Enterprise 11000 scale uh, polar lights uh, model into this Ptolemy class transport tug using this conversion kit from Federation Models. Uh, I know I've mentioned this project a couple times now. Uh, one thing I'm waiting on now, and it should get here anytime, are the templates that I'm going to use to drill out the window. So that's going to be cool. That's a first for me. I've never done anything like that. And uh, so because we're lighting everything else up, obviously, with the Hobby Link International chip uh, to provide the running lights, and it actually comes with strobe lights, so I think I'm going to add some strobe lights to the container here. Uh, we obviously need to drill out the windows to light them up. So uh, I'm going to be doing that, and I'm also going to be using the... Uh, this light cure uh, UV resin to fill in the window. So that's going to be fun to work with this as well. This is something that uh, I watched uh, Boyd at Trekworks uh, use for some of his models there. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of cool things coming up with that bill. Definitely looking forward to it. I'm going to be starting at the first week of August. I'm going to take a little break here. And uh, so, after that is going to be that Tide Bomber that uh, Jason Chadwell had given me at Wonderfest. Now, one cool thing to let you guys know about is that he's actually sent a larger version of that uh, TIE Bomber for me to work on and so that leaves that smaller kit that he originally gave me and uh, Jason and I decided to uh, uh, have a little raffle here for you guys to uh, give you the opportunity to win that little model of the TIE Bomber. It's a really cool little kit. Uh, so we will give you more details when that video is put together. Oh and again if you want your model to be featured on an upcoming slideshow Again, the email to send it to is ism at gmail.com. Just send some nice pictures, four or five pictures uh, of good resolution will do uh, with a little description of the model kit. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.